Native Instruments has released a new upgrade to their classic synth, Absinthe. Today, we have Absinthe 6. And in this video, I'm gonna go through and show you guys the new plugin layout and then just maybe even try to create my own sound. I'm usually somebody who just goes through the presets, but it may be cool just to mess around and see what I can come up with and just go through some of the presets as well. I've made beats with this since I've already had it for a little bit of time. I'll play some of those for you guys so you can hear what you can do with it because some people may think that it's only for a certain sound, but you can pretty much do whatever with it and apply it to your own production style, regardless of what it is. It's a very versatile synth and I've used it myself personally, like one song that I've used it on. Well, maybe I'll preview the sound. And if you're familiar with my catalog and who I've worked with, you've probably heard this song before. So I'll play that sound in a moment. But I started using Absinthe when I bought Complete Ultimate back in 2014. And Absinthe for me personally, as someone who didn't dive into sound design and all of that at the time, I sat there and just went through the presets. I loved the soundscapes and also the pads that came with this. I used them for a few years, like it was one of my go-tos. Just because when I create my music, I like to start off with the soundscapes or a pad. So at that point in time, I would just dive in and I found this one right here. I'm gonna play it. I don't know if you will be able to catch it on here with the camera, so maybe I'll wait till I switch over there. But this one was used on two intros. This one sound was used on two intros. If you know it, let me know in the comments below. But without further ado, shout out to McBenjamins and Native Instruments for sending Absinthe 6 over to me. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the computer. You guys will be able to see the screen. I have an angle where you can also see me. And I'm just gonna go through, play a few sounds, and also play some of the beats that I've made with it over the past couple days. And also maybe try to create a sound. We'll see, but let's go ahead and switch over. All right, so as you guys see right here, I have Absinthe 6 pulled up inside of Logic. And this is what it looks like. This is completely different from how Absinthe used to look. I wish I had a picture. I may look up a picture and throw it up here so you guys can see it, but I wish I could do a side by side right here in comparison, but it's a completely different look, feel, brought it to the current times because Absinthe 5 definitely looks its age. Uh, currently, before I dive into all of this, I do have one of my favorite presets pulled up. Again, this was from a project I worked on and I used it actually two different times, remade the beat on two separate projects, but this is the sound. Let me know if you guys know it. If you're familiar with my catalog, you probably know it. If not, that's okay too. And I don't want to play any more of it because I don't want to get flagged. Of course, I made the beat and I don't want to get flagged for it. But either way, that's just how that goes. But anyway, that's one of my favorite presets. I've used it a couple times, but that's just what I liked Absinthe for. I would always dive into the soundscapes before anything else. And then I'll go into the pads and then sometimes the keyboard sounds, piano sounds and build up from there. Now the mutator, which is the mutate feature, it was there before. I know that's kind of popular now because Omnisphere came out with their own mutate button, but it was already in Absinthe before. So I'm gonna mutate this. I'm gonna play it just like this. So we already know that, right? I'm just gonna hit mutate and see what it does. So even with that, I could turn this into something else, like of that same vibe. I like that. I could actually use that for something. And then over here, you can go and save it right here. I'm just going to call it, uh, I'm going to put my name on the front of it so I remember. Bam, right there. So I could pull that up later. And then I could also mutate it again just to make it a little bit more noticeable. So let's see. I'm gonna hit retry and just see what it says, what it does. And the thing I like about the mutate features in these plugins is it allows you to save 
things that other people will not have. So if you find something that you like, found a good starting point, you can build up from that and save it however you want to, and it'll be unique to you if you want to save it. There's other tweaks you can do. Let's load back up the regular one. I'm just pushing buttons at this point. Mutate. Okay, so you guys get the point with that. I'm going to load up another preset here because I am somebody who likes presets. And let me see. I like the way that sounds. I'm going to go ahead and favorite that one, right? My whole idea of this is it will show you, I'm zooming in, which sounds may sound good with this, I believe. So let me see. Another way of browsing presets like right here is this is the one I'm currently on. And to let you know what it's a part of, I'm going to go up here to this one. So let me see. Now I'm going to go to this one. with that and I do like that as well so I'm gonna zoom back in this was the preset I was on that's as far as I can go and let me see what happens when I hit this hit switch one thing I will say is make sure you double click whenever you are selecting something because sometimes it doesn't switch like, I don't think it switched right there. And this could be just because I have an early version of this. Like, I wanted to switch to this. So I got it to switch now. Let's go here. This one automatically switched. So what I did there was I hit the audition button and I believe that makes it switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this. Now you see these are color coded. So to me, this whole thing, <laughs> this whole layout is pretty much based off of the colors that you have here. So for example, blue is base or blue. Is that blue, purple, blue? All those are base. The reds are drums. Yellow is for flute, so if you want to see those, they're like right there. Uh, my favorite soundscapes, there's so many of them. And maybe it's just showing off in different regions as well. Like a lot of the drums are right there. Uh, let's see, where's the brass? The brass is pretty much scattered, but not too much. Vocal. Also go by character and all of that. For me personally, I'm not that heavy into sound design, so... I don't go into all of this, but let me just see if, what happens if I mess around with it. That's where I would load in my own sample, but I'm not doing that at this second. Uh, let's see, what else can I do here? Thank you. 
effects here, turn it on. So that was it on. <laughs> you guys are getting a real experience because again I don't really dive into all of this but this actually makes it where I'd be interested to try mess around with some of this and not have a sound that's just going and going and going all right so we're back to where we started again now this is other stuff that I personally don't dive that deep into When I asked somebody about doing uh, sound design before they mentioned that it's best to just play around and learn. Like, of course, I know some of the basic stuff, but I don't really dive deep into it. I'm going to find a pad real quick. Right now I'm just looking through these different options. See, I'm already getting ideas that I could do with this, honestly. Um, yeah, I like it. So as you see right here, we have an MP button, you know, polyphonic expression. I'm going to click it. I am using my Native Instruments Control MK3. And this sound right here, I'll be able to show you guys a good example of what the polyphonic aftertouch does with this, or even just the monophonic or just aftertouch as a whole. So I'm just going to play the sound. And that's without me doing anything. So I wait for it to stop. This next time I play it, I'm gonna add pressure. And when I add pressure, you will hear like the bubbling sound more. So I'm gonna play it. And I don't know if you guys could tell the difference. It's like a bubbly wobbly type of sound lower down i do have my velocity turned off so let me see if i turn it to fix if it'll sound more drastic so i'm slowly adding wait for that stop i'm slowly adding more pressure to the key and then i'm like pushing it like that so you hear it go in and out but yeah you guys i am excited about the possibilities with Absinthe. There are over 2,000 presets. There are some new ones in there. So if you guys had it before, you'll still get these newer ones. And then also, you can mutate them. It's a lot of things you could do, a cool way to explore things without typically going through the browser in a list format. You can just click around. Like if you know you want some drums, let me just... All right, I don't like that drum. Let me kick this, not kick this drum, click this kick. 
Oh, this goes to bass. So yeah, there's plenty of ways that you can use this in your own setup. And if you're interested in checking it out, there's an affiliate link below. And before I get out of here, I'm just gonna play a couple beats that I've made with this so far, show you guys the presets of Absinthe. And uh, let's go ahead and load up some of these projects inside of Logic. And I'll just run through those real quick. So right here, I have a beat that I made and every sound comes from Absinthe minus the drums, the 808 and this bell. So if I go ahead and mute the 808 and the drums, let's see here, and the bell, because the bell came from contact, as you can see. And I'll just play it like this. So I would say this is all Absinthe for the most part because it inspired everything with the exception of the 808. Here's another beat that I started with Absinthe but I built on it with other sounds. I'm just going to mute everything that's not Absinthe and just let it play real quick. I don't think these keys are Absinthe. Let me see real quick. No, that wasn't from Absinthe. That was augmented keys. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute everything that's not Absinthe and let you guys hear it. So yeah, you guys get the point. You can use Absinthe and whatever you want. I know some people may think of it as a, you know, a one plugin for one genre, but you can use it however you want to. I made it work for me. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm not going to hold you guys here any longer. Once again, shout out to Mick Benjamins and Native Instruments for sending this over to me. And if you guys are interested in getting this, click that link in the description. It is an affiliate link. I appreciate you guys who support the channel. Let me know if you're picking this up in the comments below. I appreciate you all out there.